Lord God bless every person that's hearing this program today. In Jesus' name, you're hearing the program, Gain to Know Jesus. And my name is Harris Kakalidis, and in today's program of Gain to Know Jesus, we will continue studying the Gospel of Mark. We are going to speak today of the healing of Peter's mother-in-law. This event is in all three of the Synoptic Gospels. The Synoptic Gospels are the New Testament books of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. They are called Synoptic for the simple fact that they mostly name the same events, but from different points of view. The Gospel of John names more different events than the other three Gospels. While this event of Peter's mother-in-law is mentioned in all three Synoptic Gospels, it is important to note that each gospel writer most of the times mentioned things the other left out. So to get the whole story, one has to read all three accounts. And we're going to begin with Mark and then we're going to continue with Matthew and then Luke afterwards. If you ever played the picture game of Find the Difference, you will enjoy this of reading all three accounts and seeing what things you see different. Mark 1 verse 29-31 says, Now as soon as they had come out of the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew, with James and John. But Simon's wife's mother lay sick with a fever, and they told him about her at once. They told Jesus about her. So he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and immediately the fever left her, and she served them. Matthew 8 verse 14 and 15 says, N Now when Jesus had come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother lying sick with a fever. So he touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she arose and served them. Luke 4 verse 38 to 39 says, Now he arose from the synagogue and entered Simon's house. But Simon's wife, mother, was sick with a high fever. And they made request of him concerning her. So he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. And immediately she arose and served them. Before we continue, I would like to say, according to archaeology, the house that belongs to Peter in Capernaum was, has been excavated. There is now a church on the ruins of what used to be the home of Peter. This house has several rooms grouped around a courtyard. In one of those rooms, Peter lived with his wife and kids, if he had any. Though, if you ever read the early church novels named The Acts of Peter, it mentions that he had a daughter. But well, you really cannot believe these um, Acts of Peter, Acts of John, and so forth because some of them have Gnostic teachings in them. In the room would live Andrew and his wife and kids, and in another room, their parents. One of the rooms most likely became Jesus' room. When Jesus' ministry was in Capernaum, he stood in Peter's house. And the cooking will mostly be done in the courtyard. In the winter, they will sleep indoors. While in the summer, when the heat was unbearable, they will sleep on their rooftops. Let's continue. Both Mark and Luke makes it clear that this event happened after Jesus left the synagogue. Mark tells us, Jesus entered the house that belonged to Simon, who is Peter, and Andrew, his brother. And that James and John went with Jesus to the house. Mark states that they told Jesus at once about Peter's mother-in-law. Luke states that they made a request of him concerning her. Matthew tells us that Jesus saw her laying sick with a fever. Luke's gospel is the only one that we're told that Jesus had he had rebuked the fever of Peter's mother-in-law before he lifted her up by the hand. When the Bible mentions of the word fever, it uses the Greek word pu puresso, 
which means to be sick of a fever or burn with fever. In the time when Jesus was on earth with his disciples, and they lived in Israel, of course, to be sick with a fever or a common cold could mean a fatal situation. People was dying in that century because of a fever or a common cold. Most people that did not even live to be 40. In some cases, many of the fevers was caused by mosquitoes, especially near the Sea of Galilee, because mosquitoes like to be in close to water areas. Here in this passage in Mark, we see that the early disciples of Jesus started to bring their problems to Jesus, a habit which they was to do all their lives, time after time. The Bible tells us to do the same. Psalms 37 verse 5, Commit your way to the Lord, trust also in Him, and He will bring it to pass. Psalm 55 verse 22, Cast your burdens on the Lord, and He will sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. When the Bible says cast your burden, it says to roll them over to Jesus. To roll them over. That it means to cast your burdens. It means to roll them over the other way. In, in, in our situation towards the Lord. The Lord, let the Lord carry them. Philippians 4 verse 6 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with Thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. First Peter 5, 7, Casting all your cares upon Him, for He cares for you. Jesus rebuked the fever and grabbed Peter's mother-in-law by the hand. And then she began to serve, most likely in preparing or in serving the Sabbath meal. Right after the, the synagogue service, usually a Jew will go to his house and there they will have a Sabbath meal to close the Sabbath. This same Jesus who cared for Peter's concern cares for us as well. If you have placed your faith in him and are trusting him for your salvation, the Bible tells us that he has not changed, but he is the same caring person he always was. Hebrews 13 verse 8, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. God bless you, and I'll see you next program of Getting to Know Jesus. Bye. If you enjoy this program, feel free to make a copy and give it to a friend. And that way, they will get to know Jesus as well. Bye.